Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. Following up on my last video, I want to break down three more of the best decks you can use to climb the ranked ladder very quickly with. Trust me, you don't want to miss out. That way you have a good understanding of what's strong, whether you want to play the best decks themselves or if you want to know how to counter them. Let's see what these strong decks are, shall we? Welcome to Meta Report. And the first deck I have for you is, of course, a classic. It is unrotated, so people are playing it based off of comfort. That is Pike Rexide Lurk. Coming in with a win rate of 52.01% and a play rate of 4.23%, it's a combination of pretty powerful, but also very popular. Its best matchups include Rise, Aatrox Morgue, Trundle Volley, and Morgana Mord. Its worst matchups include Draven Jinx Discard, Draven Rumble Discard, Jinx Lulu Discard, and Fizzophelios. So Lurk is interesting because I got a couple comments about it on the last YouTube video, why was it in the top three? And honestly, I think Lurk is literally like the fourth best deck. That's why. It doesn't have very strong win rate spikes, especially compared to some of the other decks that I think are a little bit more explosive and can take over the meta a little bit more. I think Lurk has been like a safe pick for people to basically fall back on. It also has a slightly inflated win rate because again, it's a familiar deck and it did take advantage of some maybe unrefined strategies or things that happened really early on after rotation where Lurk basically gets to play a very simple game plan and is also again just pretty familiar to most people so it's a lot easier to play out and got a small edge when the meta started. Now it's kind of rounded out at like 52% win rate and it's kind of just fine. It's a safe pick. Would recommend if you have played Lurk in the past or if you just want a simple and linear game plan to play around. This list is you know nothing super crazy. It's got five what like seven non-lurk cards eight it's got eight non-lurk cards so this is definitely uh one of the lists that has a higher chance of whipping lurk however if you are playing your predicts properly and you're just doing the uh let's see the card that puts things back in your hand the call the pack properly then you're not going to miss lurk too too much you'll have a couple unlucky ones but usually you can make up for it just with the overall decks consistency and pressure that it puts out so this is one of the decks that just wants to attack relentlessly you do not really care like what the opponent is doing you're just playing for your own win con which is make really big fishes and then try to get rec side level and then close out with other big fishes in the mid and late game it's the same deck as usual nothing has changed nothing is new it has just come back from eternal this standard rotation and that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how the deck plays out. I'll be giving context to why I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. And for this example game, we have Morgana Aatrox, probably abusing Ranger Knight Defector and also the quick attack weapon. Very, very strong combo. So we are attacking on evens, so we did low roll. Lurk always wants to attack on odds, that way you can start proccing Lurk right from attack turn one. Um, we are going to keep Chronomancer and probably pitch the rest. We could keep a Rek'Sai if we saw Call the Pack or something, but for the most part, we want champions in deck. That way we can predict into them and use their on the top of deck effect a little bit more efficiently. So we're going to have to get Pike also back in the deck. Maybe we'll get Call the Pack at some point. Okay, we're on both champions. This is definitely not the deck where you want to open multiple champs, but hey, it's alright. We'll make do. We can also play them out, naturally. We have Chronomensa on attack 2. Go ahead and pick a Lurk card. I probably want to do the Xersai Caller. Yeah, sounds good. That way I can predict on my next attack turn as well. So we'll go ahead and proc Lurk. And then we'll do Snapjaw Swarm on our defense turn. While also floating 2 mana for Ruthless Predator. Which gives us like a 2 turn boost on Rek'Sai. Yep, sounds good. And then the Explorer is probably not going to do much. Yeah, just go ahead and pass. And then I'm kind of down to play the Xersai Caller first action. Get the Predict out. And then honestly, it might just be another Caller. Or we could skip and risk it. We'll go with the Caller. And then we'll also play out the Hatchling this turn. Because we have the extra mana, so might as well. And then we can attack with everything. I don't really mind. Again, we want to be nice and aggressive here. They don't get super great trades if I just throw everything at the board. Unless... This is probably going to be a strike spell of some kind, maybe. Yep. That's exactly what it is. Um, I do believe we'll let that go through and then just attack with the Caller. That way we can kill that Badger Bear. They get a two-for-one deal, but we don't really care that much. 
As long as we're attacking, we are chilling. Another caller. We can actually do that this turn. Because we plan on attacking on defense. So go ahead and predict. We can hit Call the Pack. Call the Pack is fantastic for us. Go ahead and Snapjaw Swarm. That's going to get traded into by the Pioneer. Yep. And then we can do Call the Pack Pike is probably correct. That way we can be on Pike spell. Call the Pack Pike. And then we can just attack here. Um, I'm kind of down to swing with both. If they want to go for the value trade, then they're going to take 7. So, we're just going to get the 2 free damage that way. Aatrox. Um, Alright, let's Hatchling. Do I want to Swarm now? If I Swarm now, I can try Ruthless Predator, but then they could match with a combat trick. Uh, I'm good on that. Yeah, I didn't want to play Rek'Sai because of Morgana. We need a little bit more pressure first. Let's go ahead and Snapjaw Swarm now. Hopefully we hit Lurk. We did. Very cool. Pike is now at... A lot of damage. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Pike spell. He's going to hit for 7. There is the form up. No problem. Pike is just massive here though, so... Might as well. And we're on both champs. If I top deck, like, one of the mid-game units, like Big Fishes, we should be in a really good spot. Blood in the water, interesting. So I'm just going to go ahead and Rek'Sai. Interesting. That is a funny comment, Mr. Pike. Concerted. One card concerted. Sure, alright. It is what it is. Our Pike currently does not have Quick Attack. So I'm probably going to send it like this. If we did like this, would we have a lethal attempt? No, not even close. So let's just go ahead and kill. Oh, we got another pike. That is fascinating. Another strike spell, so it would seem. At least he's dying. Alright. I mean, I kind of want to blood in the water, low-key. Maybe I should do it next turn after pike spell, though. That way I have more damage on the board. Might be able to threaten a lethal as well. I should also kill. You cannot break a shattered soul. Uh, do I have enough mana for all this? That's 9. That's 9 plus 5 is like 14. I ain't got enough mana for all that. All good. Let's just go ahead and kill the Morgana. Get a pretty rare level up. Another strike. Oh my goodness. They've had a lot of interaction. I think we're fine though. Yep. Big pike damage. And then we can blood in the water. So their deck primarily focuses on putting out units and then using those as like targets for all their reactive spells. If they don't have a unit, they don't really have a way to stop this. So if I just attack with the rally and then open attack again, um, and then rally, there's just not a lot they can do. Should be over. There we go. I have not gotten a pike level in so long, actually. And the next deck hire for you is one of my personal favorites that I've been using to climb, and that is Draven Jinx Discard Aggro. Coming in with a win rate of 55.49% and a play rate of 1.18%, it is very strong, very fun, especially if you love discard. Its best matchups include Spiders, Trundle Rise, and Bard Mord. Its worst matchups are Mord Bandle, Mord PNZ, Udyr Morg, and Ezreal Neela. This is not quite the list that I run. I don't have Salvage Scrap. Um... Also, Triple Rummage, I don't know if I have that. I usually have Augmented Experimenter, so my list looks slightly different to this one. I'd recommend checking out the stream, seeing what list I'm running, because I've used it to climb through, like, 
middle of Diamond. I've been playing a lot more Nocturne Vex recently, but Discard did give me a jump start on the climb because it's such a fast deck, you know? You can pump through games left and right just playing Discard. Usually the game is over like turn 5, turn 6. You're playing very fast. If the opponent is playing fast as well, you can kind of just pump through games. So really, really fun. It is a go wide swarming aggro playstyle this time around with the Arena Battlecaster house spider and then trying to get down all of these one and two drops as you can see it is a very very early focus deck so this deck wants to basically set up get the discard synergy out there and basically just send it over and over and over until the opponent dies it has really really strong attack turns especially developing a board out of nowhere at uh burst speed because you can very quickly get these cards out using like draven axes things like that and rummage so very very scary lots and lots of pressure and then you try to close out by dumping your entire hand getting jinx level and then spending one extra mana to deal three directly to the enemy while also wiping the enemy board by one hp so really good if the opponent is trying to value block make all their units live with one well then jinx rocket is going to put you even further ahead while dealing burn damage to the enemy making it um closer for you to actually close out the game and then it has other ways to do so, like blowback and things like that. I'm pretty sure I run a version with like Mystic or the Fast Speed one. It's like uh, Time. Uh, time Winder. Yeah, that card's really good. Would recommend that over Salvage Scrap probably. But all the lists I have for you today are like the basic list from Runeterra AR. Of course, do not take this list like one for one, face value, need to be run this way. No, you can definitely like mix and match. The Lurk deck can have much less non-lurkers, so it's more consistent. This deck can also run some other different cards. There's a lot of options. I'd recommend playing around with it. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. And for this example game, we have another variation of discard. So it's going to be discard versus discard. Let's see which one's better. The one that goes wide or the one that plays rumble. And also mecha yodels, which is a really strong archetype. So you know what? It could actually be them, funnily enough. Uh, let's go ahead and pitch the vision. I do need a discard activator, because we already have, like, Jury as a target. We also have the ability to go wide pretty well, especially with double house and a battlecaster. Wait, hold up. We are just going to swarm. We are 100% just going to swarm. What is that? Scrap heap, targeting a Jury rig. Makes sense. One damage. I could have played Jury as a blocker, but probably not worth. Gonna go ahead and play House. And then we play Draven on defense 3. And then we can do House Spider, Battlecaster, and Axe the Rig for turn 4. Oh my! Okay, that's a pretty good card. I will admit. Okay, I need board space for all this. That's gonna be Draven. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 board space. So I actually need... Oh no, they didn't block the 1, 4 to 1, 1. I'm not gonna have the board space for everything. Unless they attack. And then I can manipulate that, of course. They did, in fact, attack. So let's go ahead and do this and that. Pretty satisfied with putting extra damage on the Geode and losing my 1 1. Play Draven. It's Draven time. It is, in fact, Draven time. There's now a world where I use the 1 mana to play Jury Rig and then Axe the Vision. Um, drop the bomb, okay. Uh, that's probably for Pi or like Mystic or something. Not really something I'm super concerned about at the moment. House. Is it just two drop the bombs? Okay. Or it's double removal. And then Battlecaster, which they probably don't have a drop the bomb for anymore. Oh, they also have Mystic Shot. Okay, makes sense. I didn't know I was fighting a control deck all of a sudden. Three removal cards in opening hand. Makes sense to me. Let's go ahead and Jury Rig. And then full send. We can do Axe Vision after. Once block targets are determined, because I believe they'll probably block something. Now we do X, then we do Vision, then we do X on you. Pushes even more damage for us. Then we have Jinx, and then we have second Jinx. Another Jury, okay. Um, it is quite easy to get Jinx level next turn. Not this turn, of course, because we're on two over. Rumble, discarding the last three cards in their hand. Which was more removal. 
Wow, they have so much! Electro Harpoon, Promoter, and Mystic. They open Double Drop the Bomb, Double Mystic, and an Electro Harpoon. That's pretty wicked. I think what I want to do actually is Jerry Rig right now. Go ahead and sacrifice that to the Rumble. And then I can play Get Excited off the top. Or like whatever I top deck, you know what I mean? I don't care what it is, it's getting excited. It's Rummage, okay. So get excited, Rummage, and probably target face to be honest. Yeah, GG. Could have also open attack and done it in that order. And the last deck I have for you is a control option, Aphelios Victor. Coming in with a win rate of 54.08% and a play rate of 1.35%, it's doing really well right now. Its best matchups include Fizumi, Bard Mord, GP Sedge, and Kindred Mord. While its worst matchups are Nocturne Vex, Tristana Mord, Draven Rumble, and also Draven Rumble with Noxus. So it's interesting. Uh, I covered Aphelios Victor recently, but it was abusing Sunken Temple. This current list is not abusing Sunken Temple. It wants to play a bunch of spells and then put out Plaza Guardians and play through Winding Light, aka Winning Light, which was a really strong win con for Aphelios Victor um, a long time ago. I don't exactly remember when the meta was, but I also played a version that was Aphelios Zoe and it kind of did the same thing. So yeah, you're basically stalling until you get to mid game and then you play out a big wombo combo turn with cheap Plaza Guardians and then also Winding Light Nightfall to give them Overwhelm, and then you just win off of that. It's also got some, like, cheese in there with Aloof Travelers discarding the opponent's uh, card. It has Octo Adventure as a way to get to Landmark Removal against the Ezreal Nila that's abusing Sunken Temple. Also really good against Aggro. And then, yeah, a bunch of spells to basically get you there. You can also use Aphelios as, like, mid-game stabilizer, get him on the board early, get the gun cycling, and you can pretty much create a lot of pressure and keep your opponent's strategies held down. Um, you're also actively leveling Victor over the course of the game. And then yeah, just Plaza Guardian has insane synergy with guns and also with the free spell that you get from uh, Victor, the Hexcore upgrade. So these are going to get nice and cheap. And then fun wombo combo with Winding Light. What's not to love, right? This deck isn't really that tricky. You just use your removal as necessary, slow down the game, get to the late game combos, and then one shot the opponent. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game. And for this example game, we have Yasuo Zed, also with second region Noxus. So this is pretty similar to Yasuo Katarina, but using Zed as uh, early game pressure. Sad that there's no Katarina rally, because man, that was so good with Yasuo. All right, so we have Guiding Touch, Ballistic Bot, Dark Binding, and Aphelios. Honestly, a pretty solid hand. We can full keep, minus the Guiding Touch could be pitched, because it's a little bit better to draw later on. Spell Thief, cool. We can pay attention to what spells the enemies are applying and then yoink. Be really nice to get like a Nopify or Deny. Also, stuns are good too. Oh, and we're on both champions, so I think I'm just going to try to curve out and do exactly that. Float turn one, play Ballistic Bot on two, and then do Ignition Aphelios on three for gun, and then Victor on four. And then start playing super defensive turn five onwards once we got double champion pressure out. Because we can do Dark Binding for 3, and we can also do Gun uh, for 2 mana, right? So we'll go ahead and pass. This hand kind of plays itself out. We have a game plan. We're just going to stick to it now. Ignition. Yep. And then Aphelios Nightfalled. Probably going to pick Calibrum first. There's a lot of great targets that have 3 health. Uh, both of them are great targets, of course. Go ahead and pass, sure. Um, so it's either like Calibrum Ignition. Oh my god, Dusk Petal Dust is so good for Winding Light. Or I just play the Victor. It could be an open attack angle, but then they could also be on like Twin Disciplines and stuff. I think we just need to play back, play safe. Go ahead and just be on double champ pressure and scare them. I don't really need to attack. I'm not an aggressive deck. So, actively lowering my unit's HP is kind of a bad strat. Better off to sit back, relax, play defensive. Use resources as necessary. Deathless Victor! Oh, that's a nasty roll. That's a nasty roll. Yeah, now they're like, hold up. We gotta stun that guy. Um, 
him. Sure, pass. That is so crazy. I need to develop a chump blocker for this blade twirler. Or I can try to calibre him. What about combat tricks though? It's a bit scary. Um, I think it could be chump blocker angle. Because they're Ionia, you know. There's twin, there's nope, there's deny. I think having a nice defensive unit first to mitigate some damage will be very useful for me. And then I can play afterwards. What, are you on like might or something crazy? Probably not, right? Go ahead and block here. I don't mind taking the two damage to face. I'm not going to put my units at risk. Just go ahead and block most here. All right. Now we can play the turn as slow as we want. So let's go ahead and just start ramping. This is kind of interesting. I feel like I'm playing a spell casting deck too. Wait, what spells have they played? Hold up. Nothing, right? So nothing to spell thief yet. Okay, Unworthy Soul. That is something. That is definitely something. Um, sure. Here's our chance. I don't actually want to even replay the victor now that they're tapped to zero. I want to be able to do what I want to do, which is Calibrum. Let's target Gravitum next. Do I care about this Ignition? Uh, not really. I mean, it's extra damage on Ballistic Bot. How valuable is that? Do I need my mana? I think I need my mana more. I can play the Duskbringer. It's called the day. They forced us to choose death or the blade. It's like, what if I top deck winning light? Wouldn't that be insane? Uh, let's pass. I don't really care about my ignition. I'd rather have the one mana. Oh, speaking of winding light. Oh my god, there he is. Wait, hold up. Wait, is it not just dusk petal winding light? Their scent travels on the oh my god, it's just dusk. See, this is exactly why we float. That is such a sick attack turn 6. Lunari Dustbringer and Winding Light combos added again. That is really scary. And this Ballistic Bot is pumping. He's a 2 mana 8 4 right now with Overwhelm. But yeah, this is definitely a full send. And Cussive Palm, the 4 2. Okay, of all things. That's interesting. I'm not sure if that was the correct target. I see every move. I have Gravitum, I have Dark Binding. Lots of good stuff. Bam, big damage. We can probably go for like a Turbo Aphelios level soon. Kind of just depends on what I want to play around, you know? Whatever I'm feeling. This hand can kind of do everything. Interesting. Um, I kind of want to put that back in their hand, funnily enough, but then they could be on deny. Let's go ahead and do... Graviton. Nice and simple answer. Grab. Hmm. 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 Overwhelm gun. Alright, so that worked. Am I flesh or shadow? And then let's do... Hmm, I kind of want to kill that to be honest. Calibrum. That also gave me my Infernum, right? Cool. Kill that. We're also picking Graviton again. Oh yeah, this is pretty fair, I think. This is pretty chill. Kill that. You're not getting a Dragonling. Um, sure, I can play the ignition. Now I don't care about my man. I have plenty. I can kind of do whatever. Because now we have, like, a lockdown position where we have Victor level. And then our created stuff is going to be cheaper. That includes our guns. Yeah. Illic, that's going to deal lethal damage to my poor Ballistic Bot. They also have Steel Tempest now, too. Grr. That's pretty annoying. 
Challenger. Hmm. I like that. Pick a follower summon an exact ephemeral copy of it. If it's an enemy, stun it. You're going to get a winding light? Interesting. I wish there was something I could do about that, but it doesn't seem like there is. So, okay. No cure. Destiny waits. Mm hmm. Sure thing. Um. I could stun. I could dark binding that thing. I could also infernum. Have I manifested my gun this turn? I could do Infernum on you. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, there's like a few options. I could just try to grab, force the Steel Tempest out. Dark Binding you? Dark Binding you, that leaves me with one mana. Okay. New idea. Let's do this. And then... Ignition. And then... Infernum. And then... Calibrum. That's a leveled Aphelios. Now, we must walk it. And grab the Yasuo, which should force the Steel Tempest on the Yasuo. Ready yourself. That Victor dies, but that's no biggie, because they have two HP. At least until Pro comes down, right? And then we're gonna have an issue. Ow. Hello, other Aphelios. Yeah, so we're gonna spell thief for sure. That's super obvious. Gonna spell thief the probably concussive palm, I like that. And then we can concussive there. Also giving us another blocker to work with. That'd be nice. No lifesteal for you, nice try. Grab one. Yep. I block with the other. Yep. I mean, we're kind of chilling. Ballistic bots. That way we have ignition, and then we can threaten another lethal in a second here. I kind of want to do first action aloof. I like that a lot. Nice. And we got mystic. We aloof the Mina Swiftfoot. Cool. Rough technique. Mission. I'm gonna save the Mystic until they tap. I think they will. I think they very much will. Felios. I kind of want to grab a Gravitum. Puts us up an attacker as well. Gravitum, you. Gravitum, you. And then pick Infernum. We should win, right? Surely. Alright, we win. Nice. Alright. Got him. Kinda nasty. Let's go. And that's it for this week's decks. Extra shout out to the patrons on screen. Much love and thank you for supporting, with an extra hell yeah to Verdobe who subscribed to the highest Patreon tier. So yeah, to wrap things up, these are all extremely solid lists that have multiple slots for different cards. You can play with the numbers so many different ways with these lists to really make the decks feel like your own. Make sure to subscribe for more deck videos, I have a few projects in the works that include updated beginner guides. This has been Meta Report. thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!